And the last time I criticized a kid's movie, John Krasinski's If, I, I was harangued online by people telling me it's a kid's movie, it's not for you, you're pathetic, you're a loser, why is an adult writing about kid's movies? And I assume if this leaks online, Carson leaking online, they will say the same thing about this, this review too. And so to those people, at the start of this, I want to say the same thing I said about If. Inside Out 2 is actually not a kid's movie, and that is my big fucking problem with it. It has the appearance of a kid's movie, it has the marketing of a kid's movie, but it has the plot and dialogue of a helicopter parent's manifesto. And I'm not saying the kids don't like the world of Inside Out 2. This movie made $155 million opening uh, weekend for a reason. Of course they love the world of Inside Out 2. The characters look cute and fun. They make for great stuffed animals and Happy Meal toys. The animation is big and bright and gorgeous. I actually did really like the animation. That's my one, that's my one pro. But here are the two things. This was so telling to me and sums up my issue with the movie. The two things that I, that I heard during in in the in the theater during my screening of Inside Out 2. Number 1, the thing that I heard the most was the the knowing chuckle of adults that over and over again ha 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 oh, ha, 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 ha. oh <laughs> over and over and over and over again. And then number 2, the other thing I heard was a little girl sitting in, in my row uh, who said elevator when, the, when an elevator appeared on screen, which was the only audible reaction I heard from a kid during the entire screening. Sandy didn't say a word, and he loves to talk to the screen. Inside Out 2 goes really quickly back inside the mind of Riley, except this time she's a teenager and she's going through puberty. So in addition to her previous emotions, joy and anger and so on, we're introduced to several new emotions, anxiety, envy, embarrassment, and even ennui. And over the course of a weekend at hockey camp, the old childish emotions and the new teenager emotions battle it out as Riley tries to fit in with her new friends while keeping her old ones. Inside Out 2 is the result of two troubling cultural trends. Number one, Adults obsessed with kid stuff. There was a report that came out earlier this month that said that adults bought more toys for themselves than for any other age group in Q2 of this year for the first time ever, surpassing toys for even the historically dominant preschooler market. Now, this is truly not a knock again. We can we can have toys. I, I have some fucking toys. I probably have some starting lineup figures still lying around. I, I this is not against. You're adults being generous. Can, lay into these. Fuckers. Adults can have toys. You can collect toys. It's not about that. It's not about that at all. But when it gets to the point that adults are buying more toys for themselves than for kids, come on. It speaks. To we something. have lost yeah. our way because. What happens in this kind of culture is that the adults who are writing If and the adults who are writing Inside, Inside Out 2 start to see themselves and their friends as the audience of the movie and not the kids that they're supposedly supposed to be making these movies for. It used to be adults would get a couple throwaway lines in the Disney movie. Robin Williams making Johnny Carson jokes in Aladdin is obviously not for the kids, it's for the adults. You always get a couple throwaway lines. But Aladdin wasn't made for adults. It is clearly made for kids and kids freaking love it people online keep telling me that john krasinski made if for his kids leave him alone he's a fucking hero he made it for his kids first of all poor them second of all no he didn't he made if so that ryan reynolds would tell him how good he is at whimsy just like meg lafave who wrote inside out 2 she wrote it to impress the Pixar brain trust. Read any. I read. I literally read five interviews, just making sure I wasn't gonna be 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 uh, accused of libel. Read any interview with her about the making of this movie. All she'll talk about is the Pixar pix the, the freaking Pixar brain trust. Um, which she which she uh, impressed with her nuanced understanding of adolescent psychology, and that's how Inside Out Two got greenlit. Now, just to state the obvious, because I'm getting into my the second troubling cultural trend here. And again, I, I, I trust you. Everybody, you, you know, okay. But I'm just going to say it. Therapy is an, a, is an important, essential part of the modern world. I have nothing against therapy. I'm fully in support of therapy. Duh. Love therapy. Therapy is great. But just because you've made some important breakthroughs in therapy does not make you a mental health professional. And it does not give you the license to, to drown our valued cultural institutions like children's cartoons in secondhand therapy speak to the point that they're, they're closer in essence to medieval allegory than to Looney Tunes. 
Look, at here comes sloth and petulance. Just tell a story about a cartoon rat, you pompous fucking asses. Inside Out 2 is the product of adults who are simultaneously infantilized and over-therapized. And the result is a movie that, if I was a kid and I was old enough to make sense of Inside Out 2, it would, it would not make adolescence easier or more coherent, which is what the creators of this movie were constantly saying. It would petrify me. It would drive me crazy. Oh, no, that's my, that's my anxiety talking. I, I'm, not, I'm not exercising enough joy, and, and, and now anxiety and joy are in conflict with embarrassment. Leave these kids alone with that shit. Oh, my God. The point of therapy is not for you to circle back to childhood and try to prevent your kids from experiencing the insecurities and anxieties that you eventually resolved in therapy. Because guess what? That's life. They get to live their life like you got to live your life. You understand life by living it first. Kids do not need their brains cracked open by Pixar and all their emotions literally transformed into warring cartoon characters. It's bizarre, it's smug, and it's bad storytelling. There is a reason why allegory went, after, went, out, went, went out of fashion after Shakespeare and Cervantes and, and Madame de Lafayette uh, started writing, because it's a rudimentary form of storytelling, and it doesn't say nearly as much about the human condition as a novel or a Shakespearean tragedy, because it approaches human nature like a fucking periodic table of the elements and not a living, breathing thing. Look at Ratatouille, my favorite animated movie of all time. Ratatouille is sophisticated. It is a sophisticated story. That speech at the end about the role of the critic, the, that lo the line about living amongst your enemies, Ratatouille is a sophisticated Pixar movie, but it is a sophistication that is accessible to kids. Maybe not all of it, but a lot of it, because it's rooted in story and character, not in the index of the DSM. And most importantly, it's a story about a, a cartoon rat, not about the emotions that live inside your brain and determine everything you do. There is a point where, where therapy speak stops becoming a path to self-awareness and starts be being an impediment to self-awareness. Yes. There is a point where therapy speak becomes dehumanizing, not humanizing, and that point is exists in, inside the heart of Inside Out 2. This movie should not be shown to children. That's my hot take. Inside Out 2, I know it's too late. It saved Hollywood. It saved the summer <laughs> box office. It's going to allow a, a lot more movies to be made. This movie should not be shown to kids. It is, it is, it is dehumanizing to them. It is going it, to, it, 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 it teaches you to overanalyze and overthink everything. Um, and it, it is, it's, it's, it, I really, it really bummed me out. It's it enormous. really bummed my ass, bummed, bummed me out. And I'm not making this up. I went and read a bunch of interviews with the writer who also wrote the first one, Meg Lafouve, Lafouve, Lafouve. It's a French last name and I'm not good at pronouncing things. Um, maybe it's La Beef, like in, uh, uh, True Grit. Here, let me just read you this one thing that she said. And, and the thing is, like, I agree with a lot of this, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about making movies for kids. My thinking was that anxiety can drive you to do things that look like success to the outside world. You can get the goal, you can get the money, and you can get the big job title. But it, but Riley's not playing hockey for the joy of it anymore. She's playing hockey to impress other people. It's not about, I love this, but will they accept me? That does happen in adolescence, and trust me, there were moments at Pixar meetings where I was like, wait a minute, feel your feet, Meg, because your sense of self is moving outside of yourself. Go back to the story. Go back to your body. It's normal to want other people to view you a certain way, but it's important to remember joy and self-compassion. What the fuck are we talking about? Out. Make movies for kids. Make movies for kids. Meg, I am glad that therapy has worked out for you and you've clearly made several breakthroughs in therapy and you really understand yourself and you understand and you understand all the things going on in your head. Your job is to make a movie for kids. They will maybe, maybe one day they will get there. They will get to this point. But for now, this is not, you are putting the cart before the horse. We cannot take the, 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 therapeutic breakthroughs of someone in 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 the middle part of their life that's some it's like a middle-aged person and then and then bring that all the way back to kids as though you're like it's some weird like like over therapized version of of back to the future like you're going and you're trying to like prevent something from it let these kids live they can make mistakes they can they can they can figure this stuff out on their own okay tell them a story tell them a story with characters all right that's all i'm asking and these aren't characters they're literally medieval allegories they're literally like when they used to have like sloth and i've made my point